Welcome to episode 13, the final in season one of Punch TV. We've put together what we think are the best moments from the last year. Of course, you can always go to YouTube and visit Shaw TV Saskatoon and check out the Punch TV playlist and see everything. But if you don't have time to do that, we think we've put together a pretty nice assortment. We've brushed elbows with some famous people over the past year. You're gonna see some of that. You're gonna see our creativity shine with some of the crazy skits that we did. And of course, bloopers, bleh, 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 bloopers. Of course, we have some bloopers for you. They're kind of my favorite moments, I think. We also have stuff from The Collector, stuff from Tweetbeat, and uh, I think some pretty funny moments that I hope that you will enjoy. So stay tuned for awesome moments of Punch TV from season one. I'm here with writer, creator, Gail Simone, one of my heroes. You, your body of work is amazing. We're really excited about your upcoming creator-based work. Do you want to tell us about what's on the uh, horizon for you? Yes, I'm really excited. I have a new book coming out through Vertigo that will be out the third week of October called Clean Room. And this is a book about a woman who is a global self-help guru, very charismatic, and she has um, this really uh, well-appointed offices in Chicago, and way, way deep below these offices is this hermetically sealed room called the clean room. And Astrid has this huge secret, and she thinks you have a secret too, and if you end up in her clean room, she will get that secret out of you. And then we have this other character, Chloe, who's a journalist, and she comes home one night and she finds um, her apartment in a certain state that has happened and a state of violence. And Astrid's self-help book is laying open on the counter. And she decides that she's going to find out what all these secrets and rumors she's been hearing about Astrid are. And as a journalist, she decides to go after her and take her down. And Astrid is terrified of her. She's the only thing she's scared of is a journalist with nothing to lose. Now, will this be an ongoing series or is it finite? Um, Clean Room is an ongoing series and it's, it's adult content. So it's like psychological horror uh, book. And uh, I'm, it's drawn by this amazing artist in Britain called John Davis Hunt. And uh, beautiful covers, amazing art, just something I, I, I'm so excited for it to come out that I cannot wait for people to see what he's done with this material. Welcome back. Tony and I are super pumped to have our next guest with us in the studio. He is, with no hyperbole, one of the greatest comic book artists working today. He's known for his work throughout the canons of both Marvel and DC, with work on Batman, Robin, Avengers Academy, New Titans, and much more. But his biggest imprint is probably on the Superman world. During his run on Adventures of Superman, Tom was one of the architects of the greatest selling storyline DC has ever made, the death of Superman. Welcome to Punch. Nice to be here, Jody. <laughs> We're really excited. So legend has it that uh, you and the other creators of the different Superman lines were working in a closed room, no windows, sweating it out, trying to come up with the next story, which was going to be the wedding of Superman. And then two days in, they come and kibosh it and says like, no, you got to come up with something new. W tell us the story of how the death of Superman plot line actually came to be. Well, I had just uh, joined the, the team as the regular penciler on Adventures of Superman about six months before. And it was my first... Uh, trip to New York for what we called uh, the Super Summit, where we would all get together in a room, uh, writers, artists, inkers, even a colorist would show up uh, to work up a year's worth of Superman stories throughout all the titles. So uh, it's my first Super Summit, and uh, prior to uh, that summit, the storyline we were leading up to was uh, Clark and Lois were going to get married. So we were planning a wedding. And we had, had, the guys had spent a year setting this all up. And uh, suddenly we get a phone call from the publisher to say, the wedding's off. Uh, there's this new TV show ABC's going to be doing called Lois and Clark. And we don't want any confusion. 
And so we were annoyed, somewhat, <laughs> and because uh, we had nothing now. We spent two days, and, and, and we have no plan B. I think it was Dan Jurgens threw his pencil in the air at one point and just said, well, let's just kill him then. <laughs> and we all laughed. And then we started talking about it. Just what would the impact be if, you know, Superman died in the course of doing what he does? How would Lois react? How would Ma and Pa Kent react? How would Metropolis react and Jimmy Olsen and so on and so forth? What would the ramifications be? And uh, uh, Carlin wisely stopped us at a certain point and said, okay, before we go any further, well, let's check upstairs. <laughs> so he phoned up to the publisher and said, we're going to kill him. And uh, she said, okay. Awesome. And it was like. A couple of years ago, you came to the first con that we had um, with Ed Brisson and Michael Walsh. What is your favorite part about coming to cons like this? Uh, I like the uh, the people, first of all. Like Everyone's really nice. Everyone's really enthusiastic. It's a good size. It's got a really great media um, component as well, but it's really good for artists. Now, this might be completely wrong, but it's always been my impression that like when all these different artists get together, like you meet people and you collaborate and you get to like admire people's work that maybe you've only seen from afar. Is there like a like an artist club kind of happening <laughs> behind the scenes that like we're not privy to? I don't know if it's an artist club, but it, that does happen. Like you, you come and you meet people, and and yeah, collaborations do happen because just like you realize that you have the same taste as someone else, and you're like hanging out, having a beer, and next thing you know, like things start to spill out, and yeah, it's really cool. And then you kind of meet people that you never thought you'd meet, who you've always admired, and it's, it's really great actually. Well, we'll let you get back to work because I know you've got lots of commissions to get done, and uh, hopefully you make some dough and uh, you know flex out some uh, fun art at the same time. Yeah, right on. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for much. coming. Over there. Tell me, R2, uh, were you most excited to see William Shatner as the celebrity? Uh, I'm a Canadian, so I, I can I can find fault with uh, Air Canada. Yeah, <laughs> I love that you have such an inclusive attitude because I know some Star Wars fans don't really like the Star Trek stuff, so that's really big of you. I understand that you're here with your buddies at the 501st. Uh, there's a Darth and there's a whole bunch of different characters. Is uh, Have they been nice to you today? I imagine that people are pretty affectionate. Um, do a lot of people touch you? And are you pretty comfortable with that? I guess as long as you have a good bath when you get home, everything's okay, huh? <laughs> Inside joke. These are our favorite moments of the cast and crew of all the skits that we did this year. And I don't know about you, Jody, but one of our favorite skits was the Christmas special with the with the paper bag Marlon Brandos. I also appreciated the Star Wars opening segment. And I gotta say that this whole internet meme explosion with the mom with the chewy mask, we were there first. It was because of us. It was us, we set, we set the president. We did. It was beautiful. Beautiful. I look forward to more Fantastic skits in the upcoming year. Me too. In the meantime, here we go.
was night before Christmas, when as per my wishes, not a creature was thrown, they slept with the fishes. I was stuck at a ward of the hospital's care, in hopes that young Michael would soon be there. I was a patient nestled snug in my bed, while both cops and gangsters wanted me dead. The rival five families had aimed for my camp to spatter my brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window with nothing to lose, I planned to make an offer he couldn't refuse. It's Christmas time for teddy bears. The little teddy bears are having a wonderful time today. Um, are they fighting? They are actually boxing. They're, they're, they are boxing. And, and again, no actual bears were hurt in the creation of this display. Oh, there's a, there's a being living in the cake. Yes, father and mother are enjoying some tea and uh, hanging out some bread and of course eating their favorite bird. If you look there, there's a rabbit in the tree. <gasps> the, the infamous tree climbing rabbit. Very rare, you don't see them very often. I don't think they're indigenous to this part of the country. They're definitely not indigenous to uh, Saskatchewan. I didn't know that the turtles play in the kitchen, but lo and behold, there they are. Yeah, everybody pitches in, you know, it's a busy time, all hands on deck, let's get it done. That's the Claus motto, right? Get her done. I love turtles, chocolates, yes. um, but I don't think I would enjoy turtle chocolates. Yeah, I agree. There's that whole salmonella issue too. <laughs> <laughs> you got all dressed up like a princess. No. Because he bited me three times. At the North Pole. No, I don't want to back in the airport. Yeah, he does. That's where his office elves live and he makes his presents. Oh. You like? Because I live in my house. Here you go. There you go. I'm going to prepare myself to be disappointed yeah. so that if it's actually good, I will be pleasantly surprised. That's like how I live my life. I have a, a muffin or something and I'm like, this is going to taste like garbage. And then I eat it and it's fine and I'm like, ah, that was great. It's it a great day. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Well, hey everybody, it's me, Hank, and I'm sure you're wondering, like, Jody's got her put your dukes up or keep your dukes up and now Tony's got his believe it! Believe it! But me, the whole tweet beat thing started. Why? Because the studio gets very hot and it was a subtle way for me to check to be like, I'm not the one that smells. That was the whole thing. So now you're gonna look at every time I'm doing a tweet beat, but the whole thing, I smell good. I smell good. Of the tweet beat, the tweet beat. It's tweet beat. Tweet beat. Tweet beat. Tweet beat. Tweet beat. Girl power. Tweet beat. So were you paying attention? How many different hats did I wear? How many different pairs of glasses? I don't know. Count them up, tweet them out, and maybe you might win a prize. Hi. There's something fun. There's something exciting. There's some sexy. The best moments of The Collector. I am here with Tony Antonek, who has an amazing collection. This is one of 
a few collections that you have. It's weird, hey? It's really weird. Well, welcome <laughs> to the show. Um, so tell us about this particular collection. Well, when I was growing up, I had a bunch of Star Wars toys. I loved them and I played with them. And then, of course, everyone goes through the mom throws out everything you own thing. And my mom threw out all my toys. So I've been kind of collecting Star Wars toys. And I decided I was going to go back and buy more of the, you know, of the stuff that I grew up with. So pretty much everything on here are toys that I grew up with, not the actual toys, but this is the stuff that I've been collecting recently. So, so okay, approximately. Yes. How big is your Star Wars collection? Um, huge. This is just a small part of the older stuff, but I collect, uh, I buy a lot of the new stuff. So anything new that comes out, I don't buy things like, you know, like uh, dual tanks and stuff like that, but for toys and, and ships and stuff like that. Uh, I recently got into Lego, Star Wars, so that's been taking up a lot of my pocketbook. So. <laughs> Um, where do you keep all of it? I actually am not allowed to say. Okay, <laughs> it's it very say? secret. Okay. Yes, it's very secret. secret. Um, my, my mom's basement, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she loves that. Yes. So as a collector, is it a good idea to like set some parameters yes. for what your collection set is going to be? Set some parameters. I made an error many years ago where I stopped thinking about what I wanted and I just bought everything. But now I have to, yeah, it's, it's too expensive to buy everything. So you have to set some parameters. So. So if you get stuff, and obviously some of it's going to be rare, and some of it's going to accumulate yes. in value and, and be more valuable, um, insurance? So I don't really know much about insurance. My insurance is just like praying that no one wrecks my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my okay. insurance is like, hey, don't, don't touch, don't touch my stuff, please. Okay, yes, exactly. Um, that, that, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. It's kind of one of those things where you'd think that I would with all the stuff I have, but yeah, no, I'm just... I just hope nothing happens. That's okay. How, how does a person know what stuff is worth? Like if you oh. were going to buy something from a, you know, a store or from a collectibles place or a, or a, some of these shows yeah. like at a convention or something, like how do you know if you're getting a good deal or you're not? Well, you don't. You can use eBay and go to like the, the, the actual stuff, the ended, the end, the, the, um, the web, uh, what do they call these things? Completed? <laughs> the completed auctions. Okay. You go to a completed auction that's actually sold. So not even so much completed, but something that's sold. Because you can go on eBay and there's like, someone might want $1,000 for this, but it's only worth like 20 bucks. So you can kind of like get a range as to what things you're selling for, and that's kind of what it's worth. It's only worth, worth what people will pay for it. So that's, you know, so that's the way to do it. There's books and stuff, but they're so outdated. Like something that, that can come out, like something like this I bought, I think I paid like $50 for it. Uh, and I bought it. It probably is worth less than that, but I wanted it, so I just bought it. You know, it's something that I wanted, so I bought it. But for the most part, if you want it, and you might not ever see it again, you just kind of buy it. Collecting is kind of like not about what it's going to be worth, I don't think. It's more like, do I want it? What's, what am I going to pay for that? And so, yeah. Investment of the heart. Yeah, not without a doubt. Pocketbook. Yeah, not with the okay. Yeah, I would say to people, like, I would never bet on buying something that's going to go up in value because then you'll just be, you know, upset. Buy something you want and something that you're going to love and have, you know, whether you want to have it to store it because you want it or whether you want to have it on display, but buy stuff that you love. Then we have to talk about Star Wars some more. So here is some of the loot that you got on Force Friday. Bam! This is why I'm alive today. <laughs> so uh, day one versus day two or day three, if there's something you really want, get it day one? Obviously, there's so many things that I've seen on, on day one that I did not buy, and day two I come back and they're gone. Yeah. Uh, my biggest loss was the, uh, uh, like, just, like, little things that you go to. Like, I had the uh, Dukes of Hazard calculator. <laughs> <laughs> it was $5. I really wanted it. It was a calculator. It had Dukes of Hazard on it. And I went back, like, an hour later, and it was gone. It was pretty, kind of a bummer. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. So. Yeah. Strike while the iron's hot. Yes. Get what you want, Exactly, right? yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Here is our collector making his move in his natural environment. Wheeling and dealing, trying to get the ships to add to his collection that he does not have. <laughs> Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon.
Hey everybody, around here on the Punch set, we like to have a lot of fun and uh, a lot of laughs. Uh, and we have put together an assemblage of some fun, crazy bloopers uh, from over the last uh, while of shooting the show. Uh, and one of my favorite bloopers uh, involved uh, a kind of a trick that was pulled on me, really. We were shooting at the uh, Saskatoon Expo and Jody, our lovely, gracious host, was interviewing Gail Simone and I was uh, sitting in the audience watching. Now, my birthday had been the night before four, so let's just say I was feeling a little uh, under the weather, maybe a little hungover. And as I was kind of listening to Jody and staring off into space, little did I know that uh, Jackie, one of our lovely producers, was uh, shooting me from across the room and kind of getting me with this spaced out look. And of course, at the end of an episode, it was featured as the sort of end of episode blooper with a little like hangover birthday and a funny song. So uh, let the record show that, well, yes, I admit I was a little hungover after my birthday. However, uh, really, the blank look on my face was because I was just sitting there taking it all in and listening to the uh, amazing interview that Jody did with Gail Simone. So here it is. And then I realized, like I was shot, like I was shot with a diamond, a diamond bullet right through my forehead. And I thought, my God, the genius, the genius of that. Lobo, L-O-B-O. And your, your other daily life name? Oh, uh, it's Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Don't distract me. Don't distract me like that. Come on. Come on. Laugh with, not at. Okay? No, there's a difference. It's in your eyes. It's in your eyes. <laughs> Is it Kaysen or Kasson? Kaysen. K. Sun. Host J. Uh, there we go. You can, you can still roll in. Yeah. Yeah. Host JD Kaysen. Ah. Uh. Host J J J D K then. All right, camera two. I don't get much of camera two. Hello, it's Commissioner Gordon. He just took out life insurance. Are you sweating yet? A little bit. Huh? Do you need some makeup? No. Because <laughs> if you need makeup, we can get makeup. When was the last time you powdered somebody's noggin? <laughs> I do it more often than you yeah. think. Thank you for watching this uh, segment. We'll be right back with the collector. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I got. <it>. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's do the shake again. Awesome. Well, thank you for talking to Punch TV, and may the force be with you. And with your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh! That is super creepy. So far, out of the six Star Wars movies that have come before, which one is your favorite? Episode three is my favorite. Okay, the Clone War, the um, crap brain fart, um. <laughs> Episode three, um, th uh, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith, of course. <laughs> His cape is really squishy. And it's patched. How budget is that? Get a new cape, buddy. Spend the money. That's a woman. Oh. 
first thing you want to do is pick up some little chocolate pastilles. Um, you can get these at any like health food store or sometimes in the bulk bins. They have them at health food stores? They do. Really? Usually they only have dump a bunch. What are here. they are they not are they edible right from oh, the yeah. start? Go ahead. Uh, how like are you sure? Like you can't there's no problem. You better keep testing these. This um, is important. Right, we want to have right. some quality control here. Okay. <laughs> so yep. And I was just like, oh, I got to buy those. I need to have those. So I kind of have a good collection going. I probably have like, like only 20 or 25 so far, but. I bought these as ice cubes. Right. I don't wear pants in my house. I never wear pants. Pants come off. There's no reason to wear pants at your house. I agree. Pants are for outside. Yep. They are. They are for outside. <laughs> They are for out of doors. <laughs> out of doors, pets. When I am indoors. Tony, do not uh, Tony, no! You'll cut your hand off! Okay, I'm gonna stop you. Yep. It's perfect, except throw in more of the breathing bits. Oh, yeah, I can do breathing Like, sure. like say a few words and then. Yeah, use the jar. Yep. Yeah, you got, you got. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it like, I'm good. I've been doing the breeze since I was a kid. Oh, yeah, sorry, you're right. I was going to say, I just breathed on you. I was like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whose carrots are those? <laughs> okay. Oh, so close. Okay, wait, I'm gonna zoom in on his hand trying to grab it. Because <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah, it's one minute. 30 seconds to start. It's riveting, isn't it? So I got some new jeans and I got some stretchy too. Huh? So yeah, I got some new jeans and they have some straw. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I thought, I kind of was like, I thought they were girl jeans. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you are, brought are them they? Home. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I was like, all of a sudden, I was like, I could do some serious lunges. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Thank you for watching this episode and for joining us for all of Punch TV Season 1. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Keep your dukes up. 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 Keep up your dukes. Keep your dukes up. Keep your dukes up. Keep your dukes up. Keep your dukes up. We built a sandbox that I'm trying to make sure is not the neighborhood cat litter box. Yeah. yeah. So we have various tarps and things. It's 12 feet by 16 feet and took two yards of sand to fill. I can keep going. Oh, that's good.